Yule Mintz and I'm here with a vet rose friend of mine and I'm glad that she's here and I, I want to ask her why she's here and what why she's so happy now. Yulia, I'm here to share something really amazing with you and what I would like to start with telling you is that my life is absolutely fantastic. I'm really happy, I'm traveling a lot, I have a successful business, everything is going so well for me. But it hasn't always been that way. Wow. There were a few years in my life, quite a few years ago, where I was really struggling, things weren't working out for me. I was in and out of jobs, I was unhappy, I was depressed, I suffered from chronic fatigue. I was in and out of really unhappy relationships and things just weren't working for me. Like I was stuck. I just couldn't get to where I wanted to be in my life. It was like something was just so missing for me. And what I realized when I was looking around me, there were always happy people. There was always someone that was really happy and you can see that they were really happy and content with where they are in their life. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, why can't I have that? Why am I not that happy? Something is missing in my life. There's something that I'm not doing that's not giving me that quality of life. And I realized that I need to search within because there's something in me that's reflecting the life that I have at the moment and that something needs to change in me first before I can have that. And so the funny thing is I went on to Google and I Googled how to be happy. How do you change your life? And I found personal development seminars, which was quite a big step for me. It was very much outside of my 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 scope of where that I was thinking. And it was quite a big leap of faith for me. And I decided that I was going to try it. And I started getting really great results. I started reading self-help books and how to deal with my, my problems, you know, what was causing me to attract these kind of issues and problems, why I couldn't get out of it. And as I went along with my journey, I realized that I was dealing with a symptom of my problems and not actually the core issues. So that made me even more curious to see that what kind of results can I get? How, how more can I improve my life? Because yes, I did get wonderful results, but I wanted more. I wanted to be happier. I wanted to be more successful. It was like there was this beautiful little present and package out there that was just waiting for me and it needed to be opened and I needed to find where it is. So I started doing so much more research on personal development work and did a lot of different techniques that was absolutely fantastic until one day I just stumbled across a few things that I started putting together and I just started getting even better results for myself. And I was so excited by the results that I got that I just started sharing it with my clients. I was so excited and I got amazing results because I just thought if this is working for me, if my life is improving to such a great extent, I can help other people to achieve this. And that is how my journey started. And I just felt so passionate about what I was doing that I just started becoming a practitioner. I really wanted to teach people to do what I do and just also help other people to reach their absolute highest potential. And it's been just amazing to be able to live your passion. You know, it's, it's not a job, it's an absolute passion. It's such a pleasure for me to do what I do. Doing, I know that you're doing private sessions and you yes. have some uh, the state work or seminars. Can mm -hmm. you maybe just stop, uh, share with us what you're doing? So with my private sessions, what I do is I listen to the per person's problem. I help them to identify what the core issue is because again, coming back to what I said earlier, it's about not dealing with a symptom. It's actually looking at why is that person stuck there. There's a core trauma there that's not being addressed. And in my research and what I've been doing over the couple of years, I found that so many patterns stems from childhood trauma, so many patterns stems from mom and dad, seeing what mom and dad was doing in their, in their life as you were growing up, copying their patterns. And even ancestral patterns that was coming through into your life, being activated by different environmental stress and factors. And what I do during my private sessions is really trying to find the, the client to address that core problem that really knocks out that foundation that holds all these negative patterns and self-sabotage in place. Let's talk about your research, or, uh, researching, like what research do you do? Like your researcher and what you're interested mm -hmm. in, what's your passion and about your book? As a researcher, what I do is when for the past couple of several years, I've been almost around the world twice. I've been to more than 34 countries and I've helped more than 5,000 people with their personal development journeys. And what I notice is that there's a pattern, in most certain emotional patterns with people who have specific uh, medical conditions. And I started documenting the, the similarities between people who have these specific conditions. And what I realized was it doesn't even matter what country you're from, we all collectively share certain issues and certain patterns that cause 
that could have caused certain illnesses to um, to, to become activated in their life. And it was it fascinated me to to see the similarities and started documenting it. And for four years, I was writing this book, Metaphysical Anatomy, that you're referring to, which is now 800 pages long with 679 medical conditions in it. And not only did I start to document the self-sabotage, the emotional components related to that, I also decided that I was going to take it one step further and actually start writing key points from my own personal experience, how I help people with these medical conditions to help them to, to really re get their quality of life back, you know, really step back into their power and not be a victim of this, of this illness. And by asking all the right questions, looking at all the right trauma points, where to look and what the, the, the main thing here is to always ask the right question and sometimes practitioners don't always know what that is and based on my experience and from what I've learned, I've learned all of the right questions to ask to really help the client to get their power back and to understand why they are in the situation that they're in so that they can make beautiful, amazing and powerful and drastic changes. That's so great. That's so, so great. researching that has been absolutely amazing, but it's also been such a journey because to compile all that information together, listening to everyone's um, experiences, and also my experiences with the clients that I've personally had as well, it's been absolutely fantastic. Oh, that's yeah. so great. Yeah, so yes, that that's... And I think also, not just researching the book is what helped me on my journey, it was also researching what works and what doesn't. You know, what really gets you the results and what only gets you halfway because sometimes you do something, you get results and then you take that five steps backwards again and you're kind of back to where you were at. And that, yeah. Yes, and that's what I found with Metaphysical Anatomy is to really get down to the core root cause so that you don't have to take those five steps back again. You can just keep moving forward by addressing the core issue of the problem and not just dealing with the symptoms of it. Okay. Sounds very nice. It is. It's very but interesting. it's very difficult to find the core issue, right? No, if you ask the right questions, then it's easy. Oh, okay. And that's so. what the key points in the book is all about. So it's okay. a shortcut. It makes your life so much easier as a practitioner. Everybody <laughs> are waiting for your, your book in Russian. It's Everybody coming, it's asking. coming. Can you please tell us about the technique that you use during your private session or seminars? Mm -hmm. What is your method? My method? That's an interesting one. It's a lot of fun, actually. I, I developed a technique that where I take people through a really gentle meditation through using a lot of visualization, using also a lot of wonderful healing energy that helps people to activate their own healing abilities so that they can actually heal themselves and take themselves through the whole process. And I've learned how to take the approach of being the facilitator and the guide and just really empowering the student to bring about their own powerful, powerful healings. How to really get the student to find that that core trauma, that core point without actually re-traumatizing them because often sometimes what people fear is that they have to go back to those bad memories, those bad moments that they don't want to go back to. Sure. And what I really focus on very strongly in my seminars is to not having to take them back there yet get the same results as if someone would have gone back there and just really healing it on a very deep, deep level. Oh, nice. And what I also discovered with my research is that they can be a lot of trauma points, for example, in conception, in the womb. There's a lot of ancestral trauma and patterns that can come forward and we really gently address these trauma points and these patterns and habits during the healing seminars. And from feedback from students, what they say is like, they only start to feel calmer and more happier. It's like they don't even realize what's happening. They just walk away from the seminar minus the bad habits and patterns and just feeling so much more calmer, so much more in control of their life and actually being able to clearly see where the traumas, where the patterns actually came from without actually having to relive that, which is absolutely fantastic. I'm a really big fan of that, given that the, 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 the stress that I've been through as a child as well, not really wanting to go back into my past and looking at certain things and I found and, and that's what inspired me to actually find a technique and a way and a method to help people to really gently go through that process without actually having to relive it. So your technique is based on uh, these researchers of these doctors, right? So it's absolutely scientific. Absolutely, uh, yes. Yes, it is. And a lot of inspiration came from them. A lot of, and it's also came from a lot of my own experience, seeing what works and what doesn't work, reading up. I absolutely love my psychology magazines. I love my <laughs> science magazines. So there's always something happening, something new that's being discovered that I always like to bring into my work and to see what works and what doesn't. And just really give, trying my best to find a proper science-based explanation for what works and what doesn't, why it works and why it doesn't work. Oh, 
that's so nice. Absolutely. That's why maybe it's so successful, your seminars. That could be, yes. <laughs> Because the, the thing that people absolutely love is not having to even talk about their problems sometimes and we can still get the exact same results. So yeah, this is that, really good. That's absolutely wonderful, yes. So, in, and I do understand that the sensitivity sometimes that people sometimes have, you know, when they do come to you, they're already in a very vulnerable state. So you do want to create that really safe space for them where they can explore really traumatic times without actually having to relive it, without actually having really to go there and still get permanent results. That's super. Yeah. Leading a women's seminar, especially mm -hmm. for women, and I want to ask you why you are so passionate about it and why you decided that Russian women really need it. Absolutely, that's a really good question. What I This really comes from, again, from my own personal experience as a woman and having been from South Africa where women can also be quite suppressed and how trauma can really shape the way that you see the world. It really shapes your relationships, especially your relationship with your mother, your father, how that plays out in your relationships as an adult, not just with um, intimate relationships, with friendships in the workplace. And what I realized, the more I started shifting through my own challenges, the more It, it's like a whole new world opened up to me. Like when your self-worth really starts to heal, when that self-love really starts to kick in, you see the world from a different angle or from a different perspective and you really start to understand and see what you are worthy of. And when you look back, and when I, and when I look back on my past, I realize that the things that I've been through was absolutely quite unacceptable now as, as looking at it from the perspective from where I'm standing right now. And when, when, the, when the challenges and the blocks cleared and I could see that, I was like, wow, it's, it, it can't just be me. You know, my quality of life improved so much that I just thought, I, I just want to share this with other women out there, let them understand and realize that when you can really generally heal your boundaries, you can, you can really heal your self-worth and your self-love, so many things in your life can fall back into place and your quality of life improves so, so drastically. And when I came to Russia a few years ago to teach a personal development seminar, I really saw the stress and the strain that was here with women between men and workplace and also having to fight to be successful, having to fight to be respected. It was such a struggle. There was so much conflict here and I really related to that. And I thought, well, if I can have these wonderful results, then I can help these women to have these exact same results in a way that is empowering because often people associate being powerful with being aggressive, being, being having to be masculine, but you can be powerful in a very beautiful and humble and graceful way. And that is really what I want to bring back here into Russia and to the Russian woman because yes, you can be feminine and you can still be respected. Yes, you can be feminine and you can be successful. You can be feminine and you can have a wonderful relationship and be respected by your partner and still achieve all the goals that it is that you want to achieve and have an amazing quality of life. It's not something that you have to fight for because here I find there's a lot of, there's a, there's a huge, huge feeling of I have to fight for what I want. But you don't have to, because that comes from a fear of lack. That, that comes from a place of fearing I'm not worthy of it. I don't deserve it. But when you really heal those trauma blocks, is blocking the person from really feeling that self worth and that self love. That that feeling of deserving it just really kicks in. And when when and because of the results that I saw in my own life, I just thought I have to share this. This will be absolutely fantastic for women here just to get them back on back on track get them to love themselves get them to be in wonderful relationships where there's team where you can have a team playing game there between the husband and the wife because I often find here it can be quite one-sided sometimes and it's really about finding that balance you know that balance in a very humble and harmonious way without needing to fight for it because the moment you start active you start you, you get so activated and so connected to that aggression and having to fight for things you really disconnect from that beautiful humbleness that that yeah. gracefulness not being so feminine anymore and you, you're disconnecting from your identity as a woman and you can have that gentleness you can have that softness and still be successful and have your goals met have your needs met and have a wonderful relationship and and when I saw the patterns and the the habits and how people's patterns and behaviors here are playing out because of the suppression and because of the childhood traumas. You had so many other things and from, you know, what, what, what the ancestors went through just recently with a, a decade ago. When you really gently shift and heal that, it's amazing to see the dominoes effect and how it just changes your life and your relationships. It, it, and now being able to teach that here and seeing the results, it's just phenomenal. It's absolutely fantastic.
And that's definitely one of my passions here. It's really to help women get back on their feet, be feminine, but do it in such a beautiful and humble and graceful way. Thank you so much for it. I know a lot of women who already did your seminars and they're so happy and their yeah. life changes. Yeah. Like vice versa and it's really, really nice. Thanks. You're doing a perfect job. Thank you. Like for example, your main seminar is uh, uh, Inner Godness seminar. The Inner Goddess, yes, that is correct. That seminar, that, that's the seminar where I really focus on getting women reconnected back to their inner power because what happens is what we address there during the seminar, first of all, is fear of change. I mean, you, there's no point going through the seminar if you have a fear of change. If you have a fear of stepping into your power, you can do as many seminars as you want. You're either going to sabotage it or it's not going to work. So the first thing that we have to do is you have to address your fear of change. You have to address that fear of becoming that real person. Who am I without my trauma? Because sometimes there's such a sabotage, there's such a big hold on that, not wanting to change because you find your comfort zone there. You start to feel comfortable feeling uncomfortable. And it's just really gently getting them out of that comfort zone so that they can start exploring what is really out there in the world. You know? And then what we, what we do also focus a lot on is boundaries. Because boundaries here is very suppressed. People sometimes have a very a whole different concept of what a boundary is and when you when you look at the the childhood upbringing here and the suppression that was there i can understand and see why the why people's boundaries here are so bad and that's one of the reasons why a lot of people are suffering is because not being expressing their boundaries and again it comes back to not expressing your self-worth not saying yes or no when you know you should instead to suppress it and to keep the peace right <laughs> because sometimes people associate it saying expressing a boundary with conflict but it's got everything to do with how you express that boundary you can express a boundary coming from a place of absolute f firmness but so much compassion and you can still have an amazing result and response from that person without needing to create conflict. And here it really is quite a topic to, to introduce here because boundaries here, is, it's a very sensitive topic here and to That's really true. help people gently understand what boundaries really are, really to establish that definition of what a boundary is, personally and, and physically. And what the boundary is, because I think people, they don't know what it is actually, they mm -hmm. don't feel it, they live their usual life and have no idea about boundaries at all. Of course, no. look, most people here who don't even know what a boundary is, is because as a child they didn't have the option and the opportunity to explore their boundaries because if the moment, like if you even have to ask yourself what happened the first time when you said no, most people here, like 90% of the people will say that they got punished. So first of all, your association with boundaries is going to be negative. Because if I say no, I get punished. If I know, if I say no, I lose love. If I say no, I get rejected. So of course you're going to allow people to just walk right over you because you're trying to avoid having that negative reaction, that negative response that you would normally get as a child because that response that you get gets anchored in. And it's a pattern that keeps repeating and repeating and repeating and just gets anchored in even more as you mature. So it's really about understanding a person's self-worth knowing that I'm allowed to say no, I'm worthy of saying no, but also understanding that I can say no without creating conflict because just having been here for quite a while, I've noticed that when people say no, there's so much aggression, there's so much, it's like the fighting instinct is yeah, like so activating, yes, right? oh, completely overcompensating because of that fear of having a negative reaction, that they're already gearing themselves up for a fight if they had to say no. And that's all coming from a place of trauma, that's all coming from a place of fear. And when you heal that fear and that stress and that association that you made as a child with saying no, it really helps you to reset yourself into this humble state where you can say no because you're coming from a place of, I'm worthy of saying no. I deserve to have my boundaries respected. And when you come from a place that is not activated by fear or trauma, the other person can sense that and they respond to that. And you will notice that when you say no to someone and you're coming from a place of feeling that I really deserve to have my boundary respected and the trauma behind that association with saying no is healed, you will guaranteed have a different and calm response from the person. It's got so much to do with the law of attraction. Yeah, that's true. You know, if, if you're going to go into a situation and you're going to fight to say no, you're going to have an argument coming your way. That's guaranteed. True. Guaranteed. Yeah, that's true. Absolutely. And then another thing that we address during the seminar is your association with love. You know, with, with in, within relationships with men, with mom, with dad, with yourself. What, how were your emotional needs met as a child? Because how your needs as a child was met 
that is going to be expressed and repeated in your child uh, sorry in your in your adult life absolutely it's going to be in your relationships it's going to be in your friendships you'll even see it in the workplace so it's also about really healing the, that that under, underlying core issue for how was my need for love met because if you needed love whether it was verbally or unconsciously and that need for love was met in an aggressive or an abusive way you make an association with love that love is aggressive, love is abusive. Oh, so what sure. happens when you have this unconscious program running in your mind is that you're going to go out there and unconsciously, of course, you're going to attract people that's going to respond that way to you. So when I want love or when I just need to be nurtured, you're going to attract people that's going to meet the need for you that you met, had met as a child. Again, it's the law of attraction. Oh, yeah. And then what we also do during our seminars as well is we work on our identity as a woman. How do you fit into society? How do you fit in as a mother? How do you fit in as a wife? How do you fit in as just a woman? Because there's so much pressure, like it's like there's this this box that you're being pushed into where there's so many expectations of how you should behave, what you should do as a wife, what you should do as a mother, what you should do as a friend. And when you start following, it's, it's like being handed a manual with these bullet points of how to behave. What, what part of you is authentic? Yeah. Who are you really? If I take that manual away that tells you how to behave, who are you? What is your real identity? Who are you if, if, if you are not being told what to do? I think some people will have a complete meltdown because yeah. they will have no idea yeah. because they're so used to being dictated to, so used to being told what to do yeah. that I think most of the women when they come to my seminar, I can see that they're sitting there and they're waiting for me to tell them how to behave. And that's the first thing that I do is I say, I'm not going to tell you how to behave. I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. You will automatically figure that out for yourself when your self-worth and your sense of self-love is restored and your boundaries are restored. You will automatically know what is good and bad for you. You will know who you are. That's so, that sounds very nice. It's very exciting. As we ha and we have a lot of fun there as well. I mean, it's not just working on traumas and it's not just a, like a specific kind of, it's not a boot camp. I mean, we have a lot of fun during these seminars and exploring this and just also asking all the right questions because when you ask the right question, you can really plant the seed and people can have their own breakthroughs. And that's really a big passion of mine is to allow people um, to find their own way, but being the, facil being the facilitator for that and just holding the space for them to just really step into their power in a way that it makes them feel safe and to just just soar and just go with it. That's so nice. Yes. For me, being godless, for example, I think it's like be very powerful, very Absolutely. confident in yes, myself yes. and be like ideal me, yep. this ideal picture with what I like in my life, uh -huh. what I like to be. Uh, and um, what do you think? What is a godless for you? For me, a being goddess. A godness. For me, being a goddess and being a woman means being loved, number one and feeling safe, feeling strong enough within yourself to allow yourself to be vulnerable with people who are around you that you love because you know you can. Yeah. And another quality for me is about being feeling respected by people. But that again has to come from yourself first. You can't expect people to respect you if you can't respect yourself. And that was a big lesson for me. I really had to learn how to respect myself and not just me, my boundaries, where my limits are, what I'm capable of, what makes me happy. It's got so much to do with, um, with that self-respect and understanding where the lack of it stems from and having to really go back there and, and dealing with that yeah, yeah, and yeah. restoring that. And another part for me also is about feeling that I can be who I want to be and know that the people in my life will support that. And I find, and I've really, it was a hard lesson for me to learn, but I really had to learn to let go of the people in my life that didn't support me and who didn't support my journey and my potential that was there. That was a, that was a big lesson for me, but it's so, so important. You have to surround yourself with positive people and people who love you, who really genuinely want to see you happy. That's so true. Yeah. So that that's really that was a big realization for me and quite a quite a journey for me to to really allow that process to unfold. And when I when I finally did allow that to unfold, it's like magic just happens because you just open yourself up to so many amazing possibilities. You start attracting amazing things. You start attracting all the right people in your life. You start attracting wonderful friends that can just lift you up from where you are. Because as as a woman, you are already complete as you are. You already have all the resources that you need. There is nothing outside of yourself. There's nothing that was probably putting it this way. There's nothing outside of yourself that you need. 
You have everything that you need. Everything in your life only complements you. That's and that true. includes a partner, that includes friends, it includes your parents, and it includes your job. Everything should already be within you, and everything else is just an absolute bonus and compliment. I, mean, I know you have another seminar connected with love, and especially for women, it mm -hmm. goes uh, in your love seminar. Can you please tell us something more about it? This is probably one of my favorite seminars. I absolutely love the seminar because this is where I also see really big changes in people taking place. Because as I say to my students, you can't love someone else if you can't love yourself first. Because that kind of love I find from my own personal experience comes from a place of neediness. Loving someone because you have a fear of being alone. Loving someone because you have a fear of not being accepted. But when you really truly find and discover that self-love within yourself, it just doesn't matter. People's opinions and judgments about you just doesn't, it just doesn't affect you anymore. And the way that you love, the way that you are in your relationships, whether it's friendship or intimate or in work, really changes. And I find that it moves to such a more authentic place. It, it's, it's coming from being really you, really truly being you. Because if you love and accept yourself, you can absolutely allow yourself to shine. You can really allow yourself to just be who you want to be and know that people will love you and accept you and those who don't are just not meant to be in your circle. And, and I really, I'm a very strong, firm believer in that. And the, the inner love is all about redefining what is your definition of love. Because the definition of love for some people can be, I feel loved when someone buys me a present, or I feel loved when I get a hug from someone. But for me, my definition of love is really about respecting myself, feeling respected, and allowing myself to be vulnerable with people without fearing being judged or being attacked. And it's really, it, it really is about just being your true, authentic self, but you have to accept that first. You can't wait for other people to define that for you. You can't wait for other people to accept that first. You have to accept that first. And it, it for me personally, having been through that, that process myself, accepting yourself can sometimes be one of the hardest things to do because it, it, it really makes you look down deep inside what is it there in me that I'm avoiding? What is it that I don't want to say? And instead of allowing people to define who you are, you choose who you want to be. You choose your identity. And you can only do that when you really come from a place of knowing who I am, loving myself, and being true to myself, my values, what do I stand for? And not allowing other people to alter that for you. And it, and it really comes down to being brave enough to stand strong on your own two feet regardless of what other people will think about it. But when I say that, I don't mean that coming from a place of being aggressive or fighting for it, just having that humbleness, confidence. that confidence, that, that self-assurance, knowing that who I am is good enough. And that's an extremely powerful place to be in because I find that when you look at successful people, you see that they don't really care what people think about them because the confidence that they have, the reassurance of who I am and what I do is perfect and good enough. And that is what's taking them to exactly where they want to be in their life. And that is what I really focus on in, in the inner love, is to really find that core essence of who you are, accept it, love it, and be happy with that and just let your real, real identity shine. So the result of this seminar, so people get, they, they uh, love themselves, accept themselves, yeah. they are becoming very confident, yeah. right? And Even yeah. boundaries, I, I even found feedback without even having touched topics about boundaries, I found that students coming back to me saying that, wow, I finally said no to my husband for the first time, or I, I could actually say to my boss, no, I don't want to do this, or this is not how it should be done. Like just really finally finding that, that, that fine, that fine line between my boundaries and respecting it. it. It's like a lot of things just spontaneously starts to change in your life when you really have that sense of self-love. It's, it's got such a beautiful ripple effect into so many areas. Yes, because yes. it's a seminar about you. Exactly. We have a new seminar, it's weight loss seminar. And yes. I know that women everywhere, all over the world, they're interested in weight loss. Like everybody doing diets, feet, going to fitness, yeah. and it's a problem for everybody, I think. Absolutely. Okay, what is your seminar is about? Why, uh, what is your approach to this problem? My approach to this problem is that the first thing I tell people that the problem is not what you're eating, it's the reason why you are eating it. Mm. 
what I found with my research that I've been doing over the couple of years is that there's an emotional unmet need that's causing you to eat certain food types. And when that unmet need is not addressed, you are going to keep reaching out to junk food. You are going to keep reaching out to sugar or cake. Like, for example, someone who, who really loves cake, you know, they need that emotional instant gratification that lift me up because they could either be feeling unsupported in their life, there's a lack of love in their life, there's a sense of sweetness that's missing in their life. And really, it's about not telling people this, you can eat this or you can't eat that. It's more looking at the core reason as to why are you eating it and really going deep down into the roots of that why are you eating it. Finding that block, finding that challenge that you experience either in your adulthood or in your childhood and really healing that and also working and addressing the association that you made with the food because of course you made a positive association with the food. So just healing the trauma can sometimes still leave a little bit of the association behind. So we also address associations that you made with the food, which is obviously positive, but for the body, it's a negative. Yeah, it's like to me, it's <laughs> negative. Exactly. And what I found in my research that was even more exciting is that um, I found that there were specific um, points where you can go back to in your childhood, especially with the relationship between the mother and the child or the, the child and the caretaker, where how, mm. how that child was being fed the emotions that were involved there and I also found really interesting points in implantation and also in the womb where was food associations were made. I'm not going to go too much into that because that's quite a scientific explanation but we, we do address that during the seminar but it was just, it's just absolutely fantastic groundbreaking research that I, that I discovered and it's so exciting to share it with people. It's so amazing to see people getting results with that and it's so much fun actually coming to that seminar because there we have fun because normally when people come to a weight loss seminar they take it very seriously they sit down there they take note i can't eat this i can't eat that you know i have to weigh this i have to weigh that <laughs> when you come to my seminar there's none of that i don't we we, we don't me we don't do measurements we don't do scales we don't i don't say the do's and the don'ts you're going to do what you want to do anyway so i'm not going to tell you what to what to do and what not to do but when the need to have a certain food type has been resolved, then of course you're not going to reach out for it anymore. Mm, that's and, nice. and that's what we address. That's the main focus is looking at what is the emotional unmet need that's causing you to reach out for that certain food type. And we address that during the seminar. And it is so much fun. We have a lot of fun there. It's very interesting. Yeah. And what about secondary gains? Like, you know, uh, extra weight usually uh, is a secondary gain. It serves you like our boundary where I like trying to Absolutely. Uh, separate us from the other world or something like that. Are you dealing with it also? Yes, we're absolutely dealing with that as well. What I'm also now looking at is actually designing an extra seminar for that because <coughs> I do find that there are two categories where people who are just extremely stressed and have emotional unmet needs who are overeating and then there are people who are overweight because of abuse that they experience in their childhood. Uh, so what happens, topic. yes. Yes, so what happens is with the with the fact that they're holding on to, it's like it's like a it's like a barrier between them and yeah. other people, it keeps them safe. It stops people from noticing them because if people notice me, I feel unsafe. Or if someone notices me, then I might be attacked, I might be abused. So the fat is almost like a repellent to push people away and to keep them safe in their comfort zone. For sure. Yeah. So that that definitely because that, that's quite a big topic as well, what I find with my clients as well, people who who are extremely overweight there's a huge overcompensation for something that happened to them. I see. And also not necessarily something that happened to them, it can be a thyroid problem even, no, which is all about feeling in control or out of control in your life. So it can have so many different angles to that. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, for sure. It's not, not like very straight problem. No, it's, it, yeah, it has many different avenues, but it's a fantastic question. No, absolutely. That, Oh, people with overweight can definitely have that there because it, it serves them, it keeps them safe. And it's a huge secondary gain. Sure, yeah. Sure. yeah. I know yes. that you have a new, brand new seminar. And yes. this seminar is named A Successful Woman. Yes. Tell us, what it is about? <gasps> this seminar, I'm so excited about it okay. because this seminar is really helping women to step into their power, step into their career really become more career driven but in a way where they can still have that balance between family life you know because when you're a mom when you're a wife you have so much responsibility and yet you still want to achieve your goals you still have a passion you still have a drive there's still something that you want to do for you and it's really about helping women to establish that balance helping them to have that drive still keep 
still keep focused on their goals and still being able to be a good mom, be the wife, have have the friends and have the lifestyle. I think mm. it's very I think it's very important for Russia because in Russia people are working 24 hours, you know, exactly, a day. yes. And especially women because I know that um uh, Women are very like you know they like to hire women because women are can very give driven, more. Absolutely. Yeah, they're driven more and very they can driven. work more and they w- w- work like hours more than they're supposed mm-hmm. to do and their contract is you know some crossing the boundaries here. But the problem, what comes with that, there's a price to pay when you are so driven and you're working so hard because you become so focused on being successful that your quality of life starts to suffer. That's true, that's true. And it's really about, again, bringing it back to finding that balance where you can be successful. You can have, you can be abundant and you can still have a family. And it's really about establishing that, that, that balance there because you have to look at why are you working so hard? Is there something in your life that you're unhappy with? Is there something in your life that you're trying to avoid by delving so deep into your, into your business and into your career? So it's also about looking at the reason why are you maybe a workaholic if, if, if that is something that relates to you? Because there's a reason for that and, and finding the root cause of that and dealing with that so that you can go back to having a healthy 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 lifestyle with a really great career and you can still have the family life that you want and the 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 seminar is also about really changing your 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 perspective around abundance because a lot of people are scared of being successful they're scared of being abundant you know someone's going to take it from me you know i'm going to lose it i'm not worthy of it do i deserve it i can't do that of a woman you know what yeah. Women, they, it's. I found it very often. Like the women, they afraid to be uh, successful because they couldn't find good men for for themselves. Exactly, exactly. So there's a lot of competition there as well, and it's about understanding and seeing why is the competition there. There's a reason why the competition is there again. Like people don't just behave certain ways for no reason or because they bought. Like there's a reason that's driving these behaviors. So it can either be from one extreme to, to the other, and it's really in during the seminar. It's about really finding that that underlying cause that's causing people to go either from being having a complete fear of being successful or being completely successful and just not getting out of that routine of always working, always doing something, always on the go, never putting the phone down, yeah, just not yeah. having a social life, and your quality of life suffers. So it's really about bringing that balance back into place for them. It sounds and, so great. And it, I'm so excited to be hosting that here because I really see a lot of people here, they're working so hard. Yeah. But when I ask them, so what did you do on the weekend? They can't actually answer me. It's like I either just slept or I went back to the office because yeah. I had more work that's to true. do. That's true. And again, that's got also to do with bad boundaries with yourself, not recognizing where your limits are, not respecting your own time, not respecting your self-worth and what you are worthy of, knowing that I'm worthy of taking time off for myself. I'm oh. worthy of having this successful career and I'm worthy of spending that time with my child or with my husband or friends, taking that weekend, yeah. absolutely, friends and going away for a weekend a little bit and know that the whole world is not going to collapse if you do that. Oh, that's true. Yes, yeah, so it's going to be a lot of fun. I think it will be fantastic. And really resetting also the mindset around abundance so that any fear associated with abundance oh, so can just go out the window and you can attract that. Because if you have a fear of abundance, you're not going to attract that. That's true. So really, and, and looking at the history here in, in Russia and in many other countries, th- there's so many negative associations with being abundant. But when you hear those associations and the, the core issues that's holding those, those uh, beliefs in place and the traumas, why not be abundant? That's so true. I'm very excited yeah. about hosting that here. Yes, Super. thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> seminar you have, it's, uh, it's a seminar about relationship. Yes. What is about? Oh, How Julia, can you help that, us to build up very good, nice, harmonious relationship? I think, first of all, it comes to understanding the language of love. Really, if your language for love is different to your partner's, then you two are going to communicate like this. Your need, you will feel like your needs are not being met because your partner will think that he's doing everything right, you think that you're doing everything right, and yet you still feel unhappy because your definition of what love is and being loved is different. So it really is about helping people to establish an understanding what is their definition of love and what is their partner's definition of love and, and really 
bringing that together so that they can see that Yes, everything that my partner maybe has been doing up until this point was his way of really loving me. And what I've been doing up until this point felt so unappreciated but because my partner didn't understand my language for love. So one of the important things is to really establish what is your definition of love and understanding also what is your partner's definition of love. And then another aspect to that seminar is looking at what was your relationship like with your mother? What was your relationship like with your father? Because again, it's a complete echo and a repeat of what you can attract in relationships as an adult. So if it was traumatic, stressful or very challenging, then yes, you're going to see those challenges in your partner. Your partner is going to mirror that for you. And it's a pattern that will keep that will keep repeating itself until you really start to understand why this is happening. Why am I having these challenges with my partner? And really going back to the childhood as well and seeing what were the challenges there and really gently resolving that. And another, and as well as also looking at what was my mother and father's relationship like? Sure. What am I For copying sure. here? How did I see my mother deal with problems? How did I see my father dealing with problems? And seeing how much of that are you reflecting and bringing into your own personal relationships? Because I find that when you really wipe that slate clean and it's just you, your values, your true definition of love, it really changes the dynamic between you and your partner. Because if you are going to go into a relationship hating men or unconsciously resenting men, then you're going to attract a partner that's going to make you feel like that. That's you're going to attract a partner that could potentially always be aggressive or always provoke you or always make you feel resentful, you know, have certain behavioral patterns, maybe even that your father had or even that your mother had. And once those patterns are resolved and it's not that program is not running in your mind anymore, the law of attraction, again, it doesn't respond to that anymore and it creates more harmonious relations between people. And I've had wonderful results from students actually saying that where they said, Yvette, before the seminar, my relationship with my husband was so turbulent, but the seminar is just for women, so how, how can I bring my husband to the <laughs> seminar because he also needs this? And I'm like, you know what? You can actually change so much in that relationship by just changing your blocks, by changing your traumas and your association that you have with relationship, that you have with commitment, and that you have with the man because your partner will respond to that and, and vice versa. But by just you working on yourself, you're already dealing with 50% of the problem. That's true. And that is already enough to see and feel huge changes and to create a more harmonious and humble relationship. That sounds so nice. Yes. I, want to, <laughs> I want to be at this seminar. Yes, you're welcome. You can be my guest, please. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you.